How hey, how's it going? Good, good. I have this to offer you. And this is? This is the earliest sticker sealed Super Mario Brothers Nintendo game. That's pretty amazing. I know some of them go for a lot of money. Chum. What? Can you come over in here and help me for a moment? What's up, Rick? Okay, um, the guy has a, I guess this is a really early one. The earliest print of still sealed a Super Mario Brothers in existence. Oh, wow. Mind if I take a look? Absolutely, sure. Oh, this is the, yeah, this isn't the shrink wrapped version. This is the sticker still version, which I don't know too much about, but I, I know these are pretty rare. This one also happens to be an incredibly high grade. Even if the other ones are found, there's no way it's gonna come close to this condition. All right, how much do you want for it? It's a piece of history. It's something that's, that's hard for me to part with, but I would sell it for a million dollars. A million dollars? Yep. All right. Um... It's a lot of money for a video game. I agree. It is a lot of money. I know there's video game collecting going on. I know I've seen some recent auctions where I was sort of shocked when, like, there's some video games sold for $29,000 just sure. the cartridges. But I didn't know the market exists for six-figure games, much less a million-dollar game. From all my research, WADA is the company that grades these. These are the ones you trust. So I'm actually going to go call them up and see if I can get one of their guys down here. I would really like to get their opinion, but you know, no offense. I mean, I just never heard of a video game going for a million dollars, and I just don't know if that exists or not. Okay, I, I will be um, right back. Okay. I think Mario hit him on the head with a pipe wrench. <laughs> so he wants a million dollars for this thing, which I think is insane. Yeah, I remember it, and I know why he's asking astronomical money on this one. This is probably the most significant piece of video game history that's ever passed through our grading company. Okay, and he also said that this was the best condition. Yeah, so what makes this special, there's a lot of different indicators. First, you're gonna see this sticker, so it's not shrink-wrapped. It's from the test market launch of the NES, as far as we know, which was only in 1985 and 1986. No one even knew who Nintendo was. But back then, they were just another company. Once they started mass producing these and sending them across the country, they had to have something that would last on the shelves longer, which is also why seeing this in this condition is just, it's, it's a complete anomaly. This is the second print, and it's the earliest known. There's no other second prints or even first prints known that are still sealed. So we don't know the exact number of copies that were printed in the first test market launch, but we're estimating it's somewhere around the 10,000 print run. And how many of those survived sealed? One, as far as we know. So if this went into an auction today, your estimate would be? It's really hard to tell. It hasn't sold on the open market. As video games are starting to be viewed more as art and history, not just these relics of nostalgia, this is it. This is the one that started it all. It's got the trifecta. It's got rarity, it's got popularity, everyone knows Mario, and it's got significance to collectors. Um, but, you know, with, with, with things like this, it's, it's high risk, high reward. I know of firm offers that have been turned down at $300,000. Goes up from there, there's no ceiling, really. Okay, I learned a lot today. Absolutely, my pleasure, anytime. Good luck. Thank you. At first, I thought you were crazy. Uh, <laughs> I'm literally a little bit shocked and a little bit speechless, but realistically, what do you want for it? I'm, I'm asking a million dollars. There's, there's a big business in these right here, and I just uh, been looking into maybe getting into it a little bit, but I'm not going to get into it with this kind of figures to start with. I understand. Okay. I understand. Um, so um, have a great day. I learned a lot. And um, obviously, I have a lot of research to do. <laughs> well, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. It's good right, to meet you. Good, thank you. I'm OK that no offer was made. I'm happy to keep the game. And uh, it's a piece of history. So I'm happy to have it in my collection. How you doing today? Pretty good, how you doing? Got this vintage Ford Lotus. All right, it's pretty cool. Just the box? Nope, there's a car inside there. Let's check it out here. Mind if I Go take ahead. a look at it? So where'd you get this? 
A friend of mine was having a garage sale, and he had it on the shelf, and I decided to grab it because it's kind of rare. Does it work? Yes. That's not annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming into the pawn shop today to sell my Lotus Ford Formula race car. I'm looking to get $650 today. I got my race car from a garage sale, and it's in perfect condition. It's pretty cool, the evolution of the toy car. I mean, now if you pick something up like this as a Christmas gift or for your kid, it's better have a remote control. Yeah. The Lotus is pretty cool, though. They've been making cars since the 50s. They still make cars in America, Europe. They do race cars, and they do cars for civilians, but they're pretty beefed up and fast. So. What drew you to this? Well, you know, I'm a toy collector, and it's vintage 60s, and that piece there is always one of the pieces that are always broke. It is so fragile. So to have that piece with that car really makes it. Try to find one of those. Oh, yeah, definitely broke through. It's definitely glued, but like you said, I'm sure these things break all the time. I mean, it's pretty cool. What are you looking to do with it? I like to sell it. And how much are you looking to get? I'm looking for 650. Um, I really need to have someone come down and take a look at this because it's a really nice piece, but um, I'm worried about this crack right here. And the box looks like it's in pretty good condition, but it does have some warping. You could have a nice box and not a nice toy, though. <laughs> <laughs> Your goal is for collecting to have a nice toy and a nice box. Gotcha. All original, pristine condition. Yeah. And that's where you get the big, big money. So. If you have a few minutes, I'll call a buddy of mine in. He specializes in antique toys, and he can tell us exactly what you have here and how much he thinks it would go for. Oh, sounds cool. All right, give me just a minute. I'll give him a call. I have no problem having the expert look at this item because I think he's going to appraise it for higher than what I'm asking for. Hey. What's up, Jim? Kevin and Steve. How are you? Pretty good. How you doing? Oh, man, good. How, how you doing? doing Steve, nice to meet you. This is Gary's wow. Lotus Ford F1. What do you think? This is a cool car, man. You know, in like the mid-1960s, the cars were starting to evolve. We were used to the tin toys, or we were used to maybe like a Tonka that was just a, a stationary vehicle. And then companies started producing actual functioning cars. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. It seems like it's in good condition, but my biggest concern is like this little, looks like it's been cracked and glued back together. The spoilers on these, usually don't exist. So for you to even have one in front of you is really awesome. Listen, if I had this toy, that thing wouldn't have lasted two hours. I would have jumped it <laughs> off the table and it would have been done. As far as the box condition goes, Chum, um, you sound a little concerned on it, and I'll be honest with you, I think it's actually a pretty nice box. The writing's good, the picture's good, I just wasn't sure. And you gotta think about how old this is. What kind of value can you put on it? So overall, it looks like it's in real good shape here. This is the condition that you look to find stuff in. I've seen some of these going like the $800, $850 range. I would say this one, I think you'd have no problem getting somewhere between, you know, $625 to $700 for this. You're going to have a collector that's definitely going to want this. I think it's fair. Fair, that's what you came in asking for. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you guys get to your business, all right? Thank you. <laughs> good luck, man. Thank you. Beautiful car. The box, I guess, is in really good condition, he says. Would you take $375? No. I think it's worth a little more. I think 450 sounds like a good price, gives you some room to make some money. Would you do 425? No, 450. You're stuck on 450? Oh man. I think that leaves me enough room. I can do 450. Thank you. All right. I'll meet you at the counter. Let's write it up. Okay, thank you. I paid $15 for it, so the 450 is a really good score. I feel great. Hey, what's up, man? Hello. <clears throat> I have a 1956 Pez space ray gun. Pez candy I always thought was disgusting. They started off as an aid to get people to stop smoking. You know, so it was a little round tablet that tasted like mint, but people didn't want to quit smoking. Uh, so they decided to turn it into fruit flavored candies and make it into stuff, you know, kids would like. When I ever got one when I was a kid, I would just tear the whole package open and eat them at once. So you said you didn't like this. <laughs> I didn't, but that's how I figured that out. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm here to sell my 1956 Pez space ray gun. I had the opportunity to purchase a very large collection, which included a lot of other vintage toys and collectibles. And uh, this Pez space ray gun was one of those pieces. I don't have any personal sentimental value to it, but it's very nostalgic. This is interesting. I mean, I love Pez. Like in the 60s, they started making the 3D heads and they had the little comics on the packaging. I was just at a candy convention. I went to the Pez people and they gave me this Pez dispenser. And I looked it up on the internet and it was already going for $200. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the company's lasted forever and they're doing something right. And how would you use it? Well, so it has this little piece right here. The cartridge comes out. And then you just put that down like so. And yeah. you're on that. And whenever you would pull the trigger here, the uh, Pez would shoot out the actual front of the gun. Okay, I'm sure that got discontinued pretty quick. You have kids just sticking a gun in their mouth and shooting candy, right? That exactly. seems kind of bizarre. So what are you looking to do with it? I want to sell it. What are you looking to get? I'm asking $500. OK. Um, I don't know what the market on Pez dispensers is like right now, but one of my biggest issues is there was a massive influx of counterfeit and fake Pez dispensers. Um, might have had my buddy Steve come down and take a look. Absolutely. Got a Pez dispenser. That's what you called me for. I'm trying to put this thing in the candy shop. That's a really cool piece for you to put in the candy shop, although I don't know if you can actually legally sell it or not. No, I want to display it. Why if couldn't I legally sell it? you could. Why couldn't I legally sell it? Because it was actually taken off the market because kids had a choking hazard with it. Really? So it was discontinued <laughs> for that purpose. Yeah. When you told me what it was, I was like, oh man, I haven't seen one of these in so long. You know, 1956, this was basically like the third item that Pez offered on the market towards kids. Can I take a look at it? Absolutely. Awesome. Overall, it looks like it's in pretty good shape. And then it looks like you have your gun permit. Can't have a gun without a gun permit. Can't carry without the gun <laughs> permit, that's correct. This was actually your instruction sheet. These are not usually available with the guns because this was the first thing that would go. So it's neat to see that intact and everything. So I think you've got a legit space gun from 1956. So what do you think it's worth? These are really desirable. I think you guys would have no problem getting $450 for it. Well, I appreciate you coming. Cool. Thanks. All right, thank you, see you later. So, remind me again, how much were you looking for? I'm looking to get $500. Oh, about 250 bucks. How about, uh, how about $400? How about three you smile, shake my hand, and say yes? Oh, that's a tough one. 300 smiles, shake your hand. <laughs> okay. Deal. Chum, you want to write them up? Sure, let's go write it up. I'm thrilled that I was able to make a deal here today. And while it wasn't exactly what I was looking for, it's enough to buy my wife a wonderful anniversary gift. Uh, do you know anything about a Pez gun that we paid 300 bucks for? Uh, yeah. Well, it says Chum put it on shelf 127 and it's not there. I checked this morning. So do you know where my Pez dispenser's at? If there's a Pez dispenser missing in the store, I would start with the guy who owns the candy store across the parking lot, Chum. Which, which is Chum, yeah. I mean, he was really into it. Well, I guess I'm going to a candy store. There you go. Have fun. What's up, Rick? Is that so, my Pez gun? It's a Pez gun. I don't know if it's yours anymore. <sighs> Why is it over here? It looks so much better in here, Rick. This is a candy store. This is a natural environment for this thing to be in. Those are the facts. All right. You know what? And I'm going to make this really easy on you. I'm just going to take 400 bucks out of your paycheck. Wait. Can I get it for 300 Nope. In the candy bar, I get that, too. Lame. Mystery box of fun. <laughs> Yes, it is. So what's in the mystery box of fun? I'm a huge Batman fan, and I found out that there was a really important limited edition Batman and Joker offered at the 2013 San Diego Comic-Con. So I stood in line all night to find out it did come with two of the pieces that I was chasing and a special metallic Skeletor. 
Okay. Uh <laughs> I'm here today at the pawn shop to sell my collection of Funko Pop vinyl toys. Well, I'm a lifelong Batman fan, and so I got these at the 2013 San Diego Comic-Con. I was hoping to get $3,000 today for the collection. If I'm able to walk out of here today with $3,000, I'm a sushi chef, so I was able, hoping to put that money towards getting some new knives. Funko's a really incredible company. They started coming out with them in the 90s, and then Funko changed hands, I think, right around 2005, and a new guy took over and really marketed it, and it just sort of blew up. You wouldn't think it. It's a vinyl toy, you know what I mean? So we have Skeletor vinyl. We all know who the Joker is. I mean, you don't even have to put Joker on this thing. Everyone, you just look at that, you know it's the Joker. Absolutely. And um, Batman has a little kid, I guess. These are pretty cool. I know these things can go for a fortune. There's people who collect just Funko toys. You know, I was happy with these being a part of my collection, but then recently discovered that they might be worth something. Okay. Um, so how much are you looking to get out of these? 3000 $3,000, okay. Um, all right, I know some of these go for crazy money. I didn't know they go for that kind of crazy money. Let me call someone who knows a lot more about this stuff than I do because I just generally don't deal in Funko Skeletors. <laughs> no problem. First time in my life, I wish Chum was here. <laughs> Got Skeletor. <laughs> we have the Joker and we have Batman. What this was was um, in 2013, and pretty much every year since, um, Funko has produced what they call the mystery box of fun. You purchase it, and you don't know which ones you're gonna get. The mascot for Funko is Freddy Funko. Okay. And so your Joker and the Batman here are Freddy Funko dressed as the Joker and it's Batman. When they do that, they limit the numbers on these. Okay. I know these can go <laughs> for money, but he wants like crazy money for these things the box condition and the actual paint application on the vinyl. They are part of that value of the figure. Let me see and just kind of look at the condition here. And that looks pretty nice overall. You have a little bit of box damage up here in the top corner, so it does affect, say, his value a little bit. The Joker uh, seems like his box looks really nice. Looks like this is a really nice example of one. Um, so he looks to be in near mint condition, so that's nice. And Batman, um, looks like this box is in pretty good condition too. It does have, looks like one little box crease there. Um, so they're nice overall though, and this is a very desirable set of these figures. All right, so what are they worth? With the box and the set being in nice condition and what they are, I think you'd have no problem getting $2,800 for the set. Okay, um, learn something new every day. <laughs> Thanks, good luck. Uh, will you take 1,500 bucks? I can't take any less than 2,000. Will you go 16? Can you do 1,950? I'll go 1,800. I know they're really highly collectible, but I mean, just anything more than that just doesn't make sense to me. OK. Well, I appreciate your time today. All right. Um, change your mind. Come back and see me. These toys mean a lot to me, and I'm very close to these things. So I couldn't see myself parting with them for less than $2,000 today. Hey, how's it going? Hey, man. What is this? This is a Frostmourne sword from the World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft? That's a video game, right? I think it's like the biggest video game of all time. Chum, you know about this, right? How big of a nerd do you think I am? I have a World of Warcraft sword that I'm hoping to sell today. I'm a pretty big gamer. I was really into World of Warcraft for a long time and just recently decided to move on to other things. It's still in its original box. I have not taken it out and played with it much. And so as far as I can tell, I think it's in perfect condition. OK. Can we see it? Is it? Yeah, sure. Let's, Let's take it out. Here, I'll help you.
Whoa, I think it's pretty cool. Here, let me hold this right here. Let me check this thing out here. Okay, let's Whoa. This thing is badass. What do you think this is made out of? The blade looks like it's made out of steel. The World of Warcraft came out in 2004. It was huge. The game was so big that in 2008, Epic Weapons actually started producing some weapons from in the game. So this sword is like the real life version of the sword used in the game. The sword is called Frostmourne. This sword belonged to the Lich King in the third edition of the game. So what do you do in the game? You just fight other people? Yeah, I mean, there's like all of these different characters that you can fight against. Or like me and you could be on separate computers fighting each other, you know? So you can fight real world people and you can fight other characters that are controlled by the game. Okay, is this one of those games where people stay up like two or three days and play it? Sometimes people play this, they play for days and days and days and days. Oh, check it out. Go ahead, hold this bad boy. It's... No, hold it like a real sword. Don't you feel badass? No, I, I feel kind of silly. To be honest with you, you look kind of silly. <laughs> it looks way better in my hands. Are you afraid I wield the power, Rick? Frost mourn hungers. I have no idea what you just said. Please put it down, chum. How much you want for this thing? I'm thinking $5,000. Really? I have no idea what this thing is worth. So, can you call up Steve for me? Put it down. I was gonna take it with me. No, you're not gonna take it with you. Give him a call and he'll help us out. I'll be right back. Okay. <sighs> World of Warcraft, the game of all games. World of Warcraft is huge. It's incredible what World of Warcraft has done in the world of gaming. It's one standalone game. And Blizzard Entertainment, the company that kind of created the whole thing, has netted around $9 billion on the game. But that's a lot of money. So this is the Frostmourne sword. What do you know about this thing? Well, you know, video game memorabilia and props have gotten really, really big. This sword in the game is the Lich Kings. You definitely had to have this sword if you wanted to be one of those top tier players. So this sword became one of the most desirable pieces of memorabilia, something that, hey, if I couldn't get it in the game, at least I could take it home. Okay, so is this thing authentic or is it just a knockoff? So let me take a look at it. Do you mind if I? Sure, go ahead. <clears throat> Now it's in dangerous hands. <laughs> uh, these things are amazing. I mean, there's a couple really unique traits about it. One, you do have the epic branding and logo on the back of the sword here. And on most of the replicas, it doesn't actually have the black laser engraving. So this is definitely an authentic one. You're looking at one of the most desirable pieces of World of Warcraft collector items. OK, that's it. What's this thing go for it? Well, you know, these things have sold for as much as $5,000 at one time. However, you're gonna have to find someone who actually wants an authentic one. Someone might be satisfied at having a replica hang on their wall. I think you probably are gonna be able to get somewhere around $1,350 for this. Okay, thanks, man. No problem. Thanks, Joe. All right. He just told me it's gonna be hard to sell. Yeah, I'm, boy. I'll give you 600 bucks for it. I mean, I don't think I can do 600. Could I get 1,000 for it? I have to resell it. It's gonna sit there for a while. I'll make it easy on you. I'll go 750 on it. I'm not gonna go a penny more. I'll agree to the 750. Okay, 750 bucks. Go write them up, chum. Leave the sword here. I will put it in the box. You wanna play with it, don't you? No, I don't want to play with it. I'll meet you right over there, write it up while he plays with the sword. Cool. Can I help you? Yeah. I've got the Batman Wayne Foundation house. Hey, Corey, check this out. Batman Foundation dollhouse. That's what this is, right? A dollhouse? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, part of the appeal of Batman was he was just a normal guy. He wasn't born with superhero powers or bitten by a radioactive spider. A normal guy, a billionaire. That's a normal guy. Who had a sexy voice. Uh, Robin, come in, please. <laughs> Any idea what you're looking to get out of it? Uh, uh, I'm thinking 700 bucks. Okay. I don't know. 700 bucks? 
for a Batman dollhouse? Yeah, but it comes with the box. I don't know, Big Hoss. I think, I think you need to call in Steve for this one. I believe he's at a toy convention. Um, well, I'm sorry, my man. We're going to have to pass. We're not going to pass. We're going to have to pass. No, we're, gonna, not, we're not going to pass. I'll give you 500 for it. I bet you it's not worth that. Guaranteed you're going to lose on that. Can you do six? I can do five. Take it and run, buddy. Take it and run. You got a deal. I do. I'll tell you what. We're going to bring Steve in when he gets back. And if it's more than $500, you're going to wear a costume that I choose. And if it's worth less, you see Robin right there? You're going to be wearing green underwears and a red dress just like that. Sure, buddy. OK. Write him up. Let's go. He's my boss, but you got over on him today. This piece of crud can't be worth more than freaking 200 bucks. <laughs> I mean, it's got the worst thing going for it. It's Batman. Well, I guess you're not that much of a Batman fan, but... Corey bought a Batman dollhouse for $500 without checking in with our expert first. And I think he way overpaid. So we made a bet, and if Steve values this at under $500, Corey's gonna have to do whatever I say. This is pretty cool, man. I don't know if I'd say cool. Gosh. Well, you know, it's funny, you know, I know you don't like Batman, but in the 70s, Batman ruled. Batman was so popular that you had companies like Mego trying to kind of produce whatever they could. Mego, when they had started producing these play sets, they started with like the Planet of the Apes. They produced like the big play set with the treehouse. So then in 74, the Batcave came out. And unique from the fact that you didn't have anything that was like this big of a play set, for boys. You had the Barbie dream house, you had those type play sets, but for boys, you hadn't really gotten to something that was this big. I think that's why Corey liked it so much, because he loves dollhouses. <laughs> so, what do you think it's worth? You know, so I noticed that you're missing the rope, which would actually pull up the elevator here, and then there was a little bat shield that attached to the end of it that would hang off this piece, and then when you'd pull it up to a floor, you would hook it over the front, to be able to place the elevator on different levels. That's gotta affect uh, the price drastically, right? Um, it is one of the harder pieces to find. Yeah. It is commonly missing. Yeah. However, because it is so commonly missing, most collectors would be more than satisfied with this because you have all of the clips. These are always missing or broken. Um, you have all of the furniture pieces. Okay. It's a very nice box. And you've got the instruction sheet for it as well, which is really cool. So. Obviously, you've got almost everything that you would need here for someone that would want a Wayne Foundation. If you're a Mego collector, it's not going to take long for you to sell. Okay, so I got a bet writing on this. Uh, <laughs> I paid 500 bucks for it. What do you think? Well, you know, a lot of times Chum is right when it comes to this type of stuff. He knows quite a bit about it. When you know, um, you know. However, I think at this point, I think Chum's wrong. <laughs> and the reason being is because I think you guys have no problem getting $1,100 for this. Sweet. <laughs> so, sorry, but you lost your bet, bud. Oh, it's going to be fun. You're you know in what? for it. I've got some stuff to do. <laughs> okay, so what have you been up to while I was gone? Chum lost a bet. As a matter of fact, I think you got a costume you need to try on. <sighs> <laughs> Welcome to the Golden Silver Pawn Shop. He's never looked better. I like the belt. I like the, the, the pawn shop advertising. You're not gonna make him do this all day, are you? For at least a while, he's really embracing the character. Welcome to the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop. It's funny, I will give you that. But you're gonna freak the customers out, all right? Why? It's because it's weird. Come on, it's great, look at him. Welcome to the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop. Chum, you're done. That's it today, big hoss. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. What do you have here? I have an awesome 1980s Coca-Cola toy. OK, it's real awesome, dude. Cool. This is a uh, GoBot. Where'd you get it? I had a birthday party in Burger King, and this was the gift that Burger King gave me. I think I'd be pretty pissed if I got this at 12 years old. Right. Like a Coke can, seriously? <laughs> I have a 1980s Coca-Cola robot. When I first got it, I tried to play with it. It was just a Coke can, so it really didn't fit in with any other toys. So it just went back in the box. 
It's just sitting on a shelf, so I'm just trying to get rid of some clutter. My wife keeps on at me about the stupid things I keep holding on to. Let me see this here. This is pretty cool. All right. Coca-Cola advertisement, but it's also a GoBot. So, in 1984, Tonka came out with the, the GoBots, and Hasbro came out with the Transformers. It was basically the same concept, you know, they were robots that would change into a Coke can or a car or an airplane. And you know, with the Transformers, there was uh, the Autobots and the Decepticons, and they were battling for thousands of years. I don't know too much about GoBots, but basically the same thing as Transformers, but not as popular, you know. Many people look at the GoBots as Transformer knockoffs, but in reality, the GoBots were released before the Transformers. Both of them are pretty cool, but the GoBots only lasted a few years, and the Transformers just released their fourth major motion picture. This is going to appeal to people who collect Coke, Transformers, GoBots. It is in good condition, man. Yeah. Um, well, what do you want to do with it? I wanted to try and sell it. How much are you trying to get for it? Uh, I wanted about 200 Hmm. Honestly, dude, it's a GoBot. I'm going to offer you 40 bucks on it. Uh, how about 150? Um, would you be able to do like maybe 60 bucks? 80? I could go 75 on it. Okay. 75 bucks? Yeah. All right, that's a deal. Let's go over here and write it up. Okay. I got it for free when I was a 10-year-old. It sat on the shelf for about 30 years, and I got 75 bucks for it, so I think that's a pretty good deal. Now we must plan the takeover of your boss's enterprise. Oh, it's been a long time since I've seen one of those. I just bought it. It's a little uh, GoBot. It's like a Transformer thing. But it's, it's not a GoBot job. How do you know? OK. It's like a transform. It transforms. Boom. Done. Chump. Yeah. What I'm trying to tell you is it was Coca-Cola just made it. It wasn't done by GoBots or anything. So what is it then? So Coca-Cola made this promotional thing in England, but there was no reason to have GoBots or Transformers do it when they could just do it themselves, not have to pay a licensing fee or anything like that. So they just made a transforming Coke can. It's, I just, I don't get it. But they're still cool. How much you pay for it? 75 bucks. Well, actually, it did good. I mean, we could sell it for like 150. Cha-ching. Go, go, coke can. As long as you don't break it. <laughs> Chum, put it away. Put it on the shelf till we sell it, all right? All right. You shall live to pawn another day, Chong. What do we have here? I have here my uh, antique space explorer toy. Cool. This is a Mark's 10 toy. Slowly through the years, there's been like this massive collector community for things like this, especially to find one of these things in great shape. This is something little boys played with, and um, you know how little boys are. We destroy everything. Uh <laughs> That's right. That's right. I still do sometimes. It's an awesome piece. I love the litho. It runs. It does everything the toy's supposed to do. I'm hoping for $3,000 today. The antique toy is worth so much because of its rarity. I cannot find anything on this piece, um, and I have tried to look everywhere. This is pretty damn cool. You know much about the Marks Toy Company? Not too much, no. They were literally like the biggest toy company in the world. They've been around since the 1920s. They were like the first guys to go to like Japan and Hong Kong and start making the stamped out metal toys. This was like the early Japanese stuff right after World War II. Right. If you look at pictures of Japan right after World War II, just about everything was bombed out. Right. And uh, they were looking for, you know, being able to manufacture things with what they had left. And inexpensive toys made out of sheet metal was their thing. After World War II, one of the things the Japanese manufacturing base made was inexpensive metal toys. And quite frankly, the quality was pretty bad, so they didn't last long. So it's absolutely amazing to see one in this kind of shape. So how much do you want for it? Well, I looked all over the place for this, and I found in an old toy magazine 
where it was listed for $5,500. Now, that's with the box, of course, but I figured 3000 would be a good price to ask for. OK. This is one of the holy grails. This is one of the big ones. And this looks like it's beat up a little bit, but this is in incredible shape. I would really like my friend to come down and take a look at it. Sure. He'll give me a better idea of a price. OK. So my buddy's not around. Oh. <laughs> but um, I think I know enough about this thing. When you saw a price for 5500 that is with the box. Right. Okay? And I'm just telling you, that's 100 times more rare, especially for a toy like this. I'll give you a thousand bucks for it. You know, and when it comes to toys, it comes to anything like this. Condition is everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's it's an incredible shape. I'll give you that, but it's definitely not perfect. Right. Seventeen fifty. No. I'll give you twelve hundred bucks. I have to resell this thing. Okay. Right. They are very collectible, but. Maybe one out of 20,000 people collect old sheet metal toys, right. and then you got to find someone willing to pull that kind of money out of their pocket. What'd you do, 1,300? <sighs> Let me do 1,250. Sure. All right. All right, thanks, man. I'll meet you right over there, and uh, we'll do some paperwork. OK, okay? thanks. I think I knew enough about this toy to make a good deal. Like I always say, a little bit of knowledge can be a really dangerous thing. So I'm going to bring it down to Johnny just to ease my mind. Hey, dude, what's up? Hey, what's up, Rich? Look what I bought. Oh, sweet, man. Old Limewar toy. Uh-huh. It's all there. It's in really good shape. Wow. Every time you come, it's something better and better. These are part of pop culture in the 50s and 60s. You know, every little kid would have been exposed to that on the news with the space race going on. So, you know, kids had ray guns, and then they had tin robots, and then, of course, little space vehicles. This is part of pop culture from back then. So I tried to call you to come down to the shop, but you weren't there. So I bought it. I think I made a good deal on it. And I just wanted to see what you thought it was worth. Cool. Well, let me take a closer look. In the collector world, these are enormously popular. Collectors go nuts for these. And this is definitely, you know, up there as far as some of the rare tin toys from that era. All of the colors are really bright. I mean, look at the red on the astronaut. The nose is clean. Um, what I like the most about this, this is a friction toy. So, I mean, young boys would have just been revving it up all day long. And that whole bottom surface is just gorgeous. So what'd you pay for this? Twelve fifty. And if I lose money, it's your fault because you weren't here. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me tell you something, man. I mean, with the condition that it's in, you could sell this easily for twenty five hundred. Cool, man. So you'll do well with this. Thanks, man. All right, anytime. All right, man. All right. It's really risky for Rick to buy a toy without me seeing it, but Rick definitely did a great buy. It's super rare and condition was great. He should have no problem selling it in his shop. I have a Back to the Future 2 hoverboard signed by some of the cast members and a letter of authenticity to go with it. First things first, does it float? <laughs> no, but you're more than happy to try if you'd like. I probably exceed the weight limit. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Bill. I'm here at the pawn shop to sell my Back to the Future 2 hoverboard. I'm asking $1,500. The hoverboard has uh, all three signatures on there, which is actually very hard to pull all those cast members together. The hoverboard is in pristine condition. It's right out of the box. I don't think it's going to be a problem making a deal. I'm pretty sure my grandfather brought me to this movie. It's like one of the first movies I remember seeing in a theater. It came out in, what, 1989, something like yeah. that? I can just see it. Get some popcorn, damn it, Corey. So are you a huge fan of the movie, or? Yeah, uh, always been a fan of Michael J. Fox. Back to the Future is part of the childhood growing up. The whole movie franchise, I mean, was huge. Spielberg was one of the producers on it, and after the success of the first one, they knew it was going to be such a hit that they literally, they filmed Back to the Future 2 and Back to the Future 3 at the same time. They actually had the trailer for Back to the Future 3 already done, and it was at the end of Back to the Future 2. I didn't even know that. So when did they sign it? Christopher Lloyd and Leah Thompson was signed about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And about a year previous to that, I had uh, Michael J. Fox sign this. So any idea what you're looking to get for it, or? 
I'm looking for probably around $1,500 or so. Realistically, I mean, I'm not going to be able to give you $1,500 for this thing. You got a smaller number in mind? I'm looking around 300 bucks. Oh, I can't take that. There's more into it than that. What are you thinking, man? Uh, I could come down to, say, about 900. Five would be about the most I could pay. Come up to seven? Nope. Five would, I'm pretty much topped out at five. I've seen him go for a lot more than that. Yeah, um, I haven't. You know, I do love the movie, man. And, you know, if you're at seven and I'm at five, I'll meet you in the middle. I'll do six. I mean, I think it'll just be something cool to have on the wall in here. I don't think I'll make money on it. If anything, I'll go put it in my office. <laughs> I don't know if I can go that low. Six is what I could do. Tell you what, it's 600 bucks off my school. All right, cool. Appreciate it. Take your chum. We'll write you up right over there. Hover on over to the counter. At the end of the day, I'm happy with the sale. I got a little bit more than what I have into it. Whether it goes in his office or someone else buys it, I'm happy either way. I brought in my official Batman utility belt from 1966. Pretty amazing. Where did you get this? Obviously Bruce Wayne, you idiot. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to sell my Batman utility belt from 1966. I got the belt in the 70s at an antique mall. I'm looking to get $17,000 for my belt. If I sell my belt, I'm going to buy a new car. <laughs> I really need a new car. <laughs> OK, I'm intrigued. Batman has been a pretty amazing brand since the 1930s, because there's everything from the cartoons to the comic books to the movies, and it never seems to end. The TV show came out in 1966. It was really, really fun. It was cheesy. People watched it with their kids. It was one of those shows that sort of rocketed straight to the top and went straight back down. So it was only on for three seasons. But Burt Ward and Adam West made entire careers just because they did this for three years. Right. I mean, I watched the reruns when I was a kid, and I loved it. And I think it was mostly because of the Batman utility belt. So we have the Batarang there, um, the Bat Cuffs, the Bat Gun, the Bat Rocket Grenade. It's all there. I, I just find it amazing. Do you like Batman? Yeah, he's not the best superhero, but he's all right. What's your favorite superhero? The greatest superhero of all time, Superman. Uh -oh. I'm not with you on Superman. Superman is what Batman pays millions of dollars to be. And guess what? Superman was born that way. Batman, all he needs is a little kryptonite, and Superman's nothing. So what do you want for this? 17000 Holy something. That's a lot of money. Um, G. Willikers is the proper terminology. G. Willikers? Yeah. All right, my toy guy is just one block away. I'm going to give him a call, and we'll get it figured out from there. That sounds good. Well, I'll be right back. Batman, way better than Superman, hands down. I'm not saying that Batman's not cool. I'm just saying Superman's better. Yeah. Batman's like a super cop at best. Super cop? Yeah. Batman was pretty cool, man. Yeah, he's pretty cool, but he's not a better superhero than Superman. I mean, Superman kind of was the reason that the Batman show even got made. The Superman show was running more for, like, little kids, and they decided to do this Batman show, which was geared towards teenagers. But it fell back to little kids. So the Batman utility belt. This thing is amazing. Can I take a look at it? Yes. I would have been so cool when I was six years old if I had this. I'll tell you what, to Batman collectors, guys, <laughs> this is the holy grail. It was a toy, so it wasn't necessarily meant to hold up. And a lot of these didn't, because what happened is you opened it up on the way out the store, you ripped the belt out of the box, you put it on before you even got in the car. But this is an incredible shape. It has not been removed. It has not been played with. There's no stress marks on it. The only one thing that I see here is there's a little bit of paper tear right there off the box. Yeah, it's pretty neat. But the thing is, she is asking $17 thousand dollars for this i've seen the belts just by themselves the most common pieces to find sell for thousands of dollars in the case of this i think you've got an absolutely great piece you have tons of batman collectors tons of superhero collectors so you can't miss on the market i think you have no problem getting sixteen thousand dollars for this yes <laughs> thanks dude yeah thank you wow amazing jump all right have a good one and this thing is incredible. All of the toys are immaculate. Everything pops. So I think the shop's going to have no problem getting $16,000 for this. I'll give you 10 grand for it. Oh, no, no, no. I would consider 15000 <sighs> You'd still make $1,000. No, I wouldn't make any money. 
If I worked on margins like that, I would be out of business. I will give you $11,000. 12,000? No. 1150? No. $11,000. Anything more than that, it's not going to make any sense to me. Okay. All right, deal. Sweet. Chum will meet you right over there and do some paperwork with you and get you paid. Okay, and no, okay. don't touch. You're not going to touch it. It's not going to fit you. It's just 32 waist. Hey, what do we got here? I've got two items from the greatest cartoon of the 80s, Thundercats. All I know about Thundercats is, like, I know Corey really, really liked Thundercats. I bet he rode something like this in his little Thundercat underwears around the neighborhood. I can just see you chasing him. Get back here, son, and put some pants on. <laughs> the two toys that I have today are the Thundercats Thunder Tank Pedal Power Cycle and the Thundercats Tungasaurus figure. Both these items are pretty rare. I'm asking for 1000 for each of them. They're definitely worth around what I'm asking. It obviously has something to do with cats. Basically, it's some cats, and their planet got destroyed. They were always battling these reptilian humanoids. OK. So you a fan of Thundercats? Oh, yeah, I've been a fan since I was a kid, and I've been a serious collector for probably about 10 years or so. So where'd you get them? Um, this was from another collector. It's just been sitting in my collection room, so it's never been ridden. I mean, you're not going to find one in better condition. What is this? This is the Tungasaurus. It was basically a monster that was in the cartoon, maybe two episodes. It still works. You push the tail out, the head comes up. Tongue comes out, it grabs the little other characters. OK. How much do you want for this stuff? I'm looking for 1,000 for this and 1,000 for this. So 2,000 total. All right, let me call someone who knows something about this sort of out of my realm. I'm not sure how many adults will spend money on these things, so I called him my toy expert, Steve. Hopefully, he can tell me there's a big Thundercat following that will make it worth my while. Wow, this is cool. I'm glad someone can appreciate it. Got a call from the guys to come over and check out some Thundercats toys. As soon as I walk in and I see who the collector is, and I'm like, this guy has to be a Thundercats purist, without a doubt. So you got the uh, Thundercats pedal cycle. This thing's very, very cool. When the Big Wheels were actually produced back in 1969, I don't think they ever planned licensing for them. And so as you got into the 80s, they started licensing anything they could and turning them into a Big Wheel. You had G.I. Joe and Barbie, Masters of the Universe. The Tungasaurus, it's actually not finished. So the original prototypes of this toy actually had arms. Because in the, in, in the actual show, the Tungasaurus had arms, and his arms were really short, reminiscent of Tronosaurus Rex <laughs> and T-Rex arms. What happened was the toys actually came out in 84. The show didn't air until 85. They couldn't get it produced in time to get it done, but they wanted to have the toys out for the holiday season in 84. And it's considered one of the rarest production figures from the line. So what do you think of these? The condition of the bike is pretty good. It does have some scuff marks and a little bit of wear. Overall, though, it's a really nice example. They're usually tore up. The paint is almost always scuffed. And the back of the seats are even usually missing. And the Tungasaurus is the expected condition for one that would be out of the box and maybe have been played with at some point. What do these things go for? Individually, the Tungasaurus is something that collectors clamor for, especially from the action figure side. I think you can get $700 for it. The Thunder Tank Cycle, you could do $1,100 on this one. So I think in total, to expect $1,800 for the pair, I think is reasonable. Very nice, very nice. All right, well, thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. In the 80s, it was all about licensing. You were the cool kid if you had whatever it was from your favorite toy line. I think if the shop took a chance on buying these, they would find the right buyer. That collector's definitely out there looking for these. Would you take a grand for all of it? A thousand bucks? I can't do a grand. That alone is worth over a grand. Can you do 15? No. <laughs> What's the best you can do? We can do 1,200. We got a deal? Chum, do not listen to a single word he says. It means nothing. I'll give you 1,100 bucks. You can't do any more than that? That's all I can do. I can't. I can't do 11. Okay. I'm sorry. Thanks for coming in, man. Thank you anyway. I don't get you sometimes. Trump tried to help out, but Rick just wasn't having it. And I understand that he needs to make money here, but the Thunder Tank alone is $1,100. I just can't do that. Brought you a box of 
Popeye water pistols. Like yeah. Popeye the Sailor Man? Like, like Popeye the Sailor Man. You eat your spinach today? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I brought some Popeye water pistols to sell. The water pistols are in good condition, and the box for its age is in real good condition. I, I believe the water pistols, they were made in the 1930s. I've never seen another set, so I, I figure they're, they're worth quite a bit. I think these are pretty cool. Do you mind if I open them up? No. Popeye's pretty cool. Like, he was pretty popular in the 30s, been in comics, strips, movies. Basically, he was just a seller, and he used to just, like, go around and save olive oil and all these different situations. And he was known for his corn cob pipe and his muscles and... Spanish. And his spinach, <laughs> yeah. He ate his spinach to get his power. I actually made my dad go out and give me cans of spinach so I could be strong like Popeye. At one point, spinach sales were even up, and they gave Popeye the credit for it. I'd rather have the guns as I had the spinach. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Once I opened that can of spinach, I never took a bite of it. How much do you want for these? I'm asking $1,500, because I think they're pretty rare. I want to see what this box is and see if this is all real or if you just have 12 separate guns here with a box someone made. OK. So do you got a little bit of time to hang out? I can go call sure. someone down, and uh, he can come take a look at this stuff? Sure. All right, give me just a minute. OK. Old toys do really well in the shop, but I'm not sure if these are actually Popeye merchandise. But I'm hoping they all check out, because I bet we can make some good money. And these are cool. You would fill them by dipping them down into the water, pulling the trigger, and then expanding it. And it would fill the barrel with about one trigger's worth of water. <laughs> <laughs> You're constantly refilling it and shooting these things. The Popeye story is really funny because, like, in 1929, the comic strip came out. And then in 33, it got adapted by Paramount, and Paramount started making short films. It only took four years to go from comic strip to the big screen. So why is Popeye on the box and he's not anywhere on the gun? Recognizable character. In marketing and in advertising, especially with toys, it was either the cartoon character or the comic strip. Because it has the box and it's the complete set that the retailer would have received, it's really an interesting piece. Uh, well, what kind of value would you put on this collection? With it complete with the box, you have all of the guns. There's one of the inserts there. And the box is actually in relatively good condition. I would say you'd have no problem getting $2,500. All right, well, good. Good. this is all I needed to hear. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Appreciate that. Yep. Well, I bet you'd like to hear what he had to say. I did. All right, well, how much do you want for him? He said 25. Let's try 22. 22 is going to be way off the mark that I'm going to be able to pay you for them. They do have a value of 2,500 bucks, but I have to find someone that's willing to pay 2,500 bucks for them. I'm at your $1,500 asking price. No. How about 17? I can't do 17. I'd like to do 16. Well. At the end of the day, I have to be willing to accept less than 2,500 if someone walks in here and offers me 22 or even 21. I have to get them at a price where I can sell them at that. Well, I'd like for you to do 1650. 1650? I think that gives me plenty of room. Let's make a deal. All right. All right, blow me down. All right. Yeah. I'll meet you right over here. Thank you. Chum and I, we finished off at 1650. I'd like to get to 2500 but I'll take the 1650 What do we got here? Got a good guy's doll? Chucky from the movie Child's Play. Everybody refers it to Chucky, but it's actually a good guy's doll. A little bit more rare. OK. So where'd you get this? I got it as a gift from my buddy. His children are so afraid of it that he can't even keep it in the house anymore. I can relate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the pawn shop to sell my good guy's doll that was a prop in the movie Child's Play. If I'm able to sell the doll, I'm going to give back the money to my friend so that way he can put that money into a college fund for his girls. I remember when I was a kid being scared as hell of this movie when I saw it. A lot of nightmares for a lot of kids. Child's Play. It was a typical 80s slasher horror movie. Yeah. It was a serial killer that got killed in a toy store, and he was somehow transformed into one of these good guy dolls. Yeah, they did some seance and put his essence into the doll that turns into Chucky. Yeah. And it just dies a million different ways and just keeps coming on back. It's a classic. 
And then there was Child's Play 2, 3, Bride of Chucky. Bride of Chucky. And they definitely have a cult following. When you watch them now, they're almost comical. But yeah. when I was a kid, it was absolutely terrifying. It wasn't like that scary. It was a doll. <sighs> He's such a nerd. So it's not an actual doll, is it? Uh, no, it's a prop. In the first movie, they go into the toy store, and there's a whole mock-up wall of multiples of these. Are you sure this was actually in the movie? Because the store blew up. Like, I know most of these, if not all of them, probably got destroyed. I mean, do you have proof this is on screen? Yeah. The maker of the doll gave me the certificate of authenticity. It shows that it was in the first movie and the second movie. And that's why, too, it's not a perfect box. Like, there's damage because it was part of those scenes. OK, so what are you looking to do with it, man? I'd like to sell it. What are you trying to get out of it? I'd like to get at least eight. 800, 8,000, 8,000, 8, okay. That seems like quite a bit, man. I know there's a collector's market out there for these things. I just don't know how much those collectors are willing to pay. I'll tell you what, let me call my buddy Tall Robin. He's a props expert. He can definitely shed some light on it for me. Sounds right. good, right thank back. you. He was just trying to get away, he's scared. <laughs> so Tall Rob is coming down to check it out and tell me if it's actually legit. Check it out. Immediately recognizable. Uh, very cool. I would like to know if it was one that was actually used in the movie or if this is just an extra that they had laying around. You know, because I know in the movie Child's Play, they all got blown up. You're correct. In the movie, most of the dolls are destroyed. But they had made numerous dolls outside of that scene because if that scene goes bad and they need to do it again, they certainly have to have more product to put in the scene again. He does have this certificate of authenticity, if you want to take a look at it. I happen to know this gentleman who created the doll. He's a huge special effects artist in Hollywood. So for him to put his name on a certificate of authenticity, I consider that legit. What else can I tell you about it? Well, what's it worth? It's a background prop. The significant value of items are in the foreground props. The dagger that he used to d slice and dice up people with is a foreground prop and would have significant value. Background props? are fun, collectible, for sure. Overall, it's, it's in excellent condition. I believe in today's marketplace, at a competitive auction, this doll should bring somewhere in the neighborhood of $5,000. Well, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Good to see you again, Corey. OK, so um, now what would you take for it? Oh, I don't know. I mean, 7000 he said if it was a really competitive good auction, it could go for 5000 That being said, I'm still paying about 30% in fees. I'd like to offer you 1000 bucks for it. Yeah, we're, I know we're at completely different ends of the field on it. My bottom dollar, 6500 I mean, I can go up to two. Um, I just think, I don't think we can do it then, bud. I'm right, sorry. Well, I appreciate it. Bring I'm it sorry. back if you uh, change your mind. All right, brother. Appreciate it. $2,000 is just too low. I think that if I just did my own digging, I can possibly get more for it. Rick, <laughs> what are you doing here? How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Good to see you. I'm up here at the Flamingo Hotel in the Las Vegas Strip. Marie Osmond is a friend of mine. She's been asking me for years to see her show. And apparently, her hair and makeup person, who's got a really cool old Barbie doll, so maybe I can make a deal and actually see the show. You've been here nine years, and I haven't seen your show, and so. And you live here, Rick. What is this about? No excuse. I, I know. I mean, I keep on telling you I will, and I'm here. <laughs> I know. Is that crazy? Nine years? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, they, Caesar asked if I wanted to work for another year. We just finished our eighth, and I said, no. But I said it in German, nine. <laughs> so here we go. This is Kim Goodwin. How's it going? Hey, nice Kim to does meet my you. hair and makeup. Can you do something for him? Sure. Nothing. <laughs> we have nothing that can be done. <laughs> A hair piece we can put this on is, you. This is what six children will do to you. <laughs> Give me two seconds. I have to just go check with my dancers really quick. Hey, tell him about your dolls. He has awesome dolls. Hold on. Is that a 1959 number one Barbie? That's number one. That is a ponytail Barbie. Here, I'll bring it here so you can look at it much closer. Uh, is that the original box? That's the original box, and it's signed by Ruth Handler, the creator of Barbie. That's pretty amazing. Where did you get that? Um, I just appeared at my doorstep one day. <laughs> 
I like to scour antique stores and I found one that had a number one Barbie. But once you get it, then you're okay to get rid of it. It's really strange. I'm gonna try to shoot for higher, of course, but 5,000 is, is the lowest I'll go. I have never had a number one Barbie. Oh, you haven't? I've had some early Barbies, but I've never had this one. She has reproduction shoes on her because the original black ones stain the feet. And it has everything. It has the original glasses and original booklet. This is a reproduction stand. But. OK. Um, these are, like, incredibly rare. This is, like, one of the holy grails, like, you know, 2020. Exactly. It really is. Well, yeah, it's a work of art. And the clothes were amazing. They were, like, couture humans' clothes, but shrunk down. The quality was amazing. So I know the lady who designed it, she named... Her daughter was named Barbie. And her son was named Ken, right? Yes. OK, and they were, that's where they came up with those names. When she came out, she didn't have any friends, right? No, she was like a loner. And then they <laughs> gave her a best friend named Midge. And then they came out with Ken. And then they came out with Alan. I think that was Ken's boyfriend, but they just tried <laughs> to say that it was Midge's boyfriend. Barbie was really, really iconic. I mean, the thing is, this was like literally one of the very first toys for girls that wasn't a baby doll to teach you how to be a mom. Exactly, because there were baby dolls before that. This yeah. was something to play with, and when you grow up, you're going to go to college, you get out of college, you get have a career. So I, I think that part of it was really cool. Yeah, but I wouldn't give that to my child back then. If you blew her up to human size, you know how weird she would look? Oh, I got, I don't Why know. Why do you want it so bad? <laughs> I want to sell it and make money. How much do you want for it? Um, 10 grand. OK, there's 100 fakes for every real one. The show doesn't start for a while. Do you mind if I call my toy guy? That's fine. I'll be right back. Give me a minute. Yeah. Typical me. If I can see a show and make some money at the same time, why not? <laughs> Hi, Kim. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. You, you know Kim? Uh, yeah, Kim actually has bought a few Barbies from us. Did he get this one from you? No, he's been cheating on me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. So it's a uh, 1959 ponytail Barbie. I, myself, have only ever had a couple of these. Pretty impressive. Yeah, you can look at it and examine. Yeah, if you don't mind. No, not at all. Barbie was a fashion doll. She was made for kids, but in reality, she was made to kind of indicate to a young girl that there was style and fashion out there. It really came out of nowhere. You know, when they came out in Toy Fair in 1959, people were kind of like, what are you going to do with that? And they took off like wildfire. You know, there was over, you know, 250,000 of these made, and a small, small fraction of those exist today. So what are your concerns with this doll, right? Well, first off, is it real? I know just enough to get me in trouble by a fake, so that's why I called you in. <laughs> yeah, there's a few indications on how to tell. One, the torso is hard, solid core throughout um, the smell. She should actually smell like crayon. You want to try it? Come on, smell it. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the iris of the eyes and seeing the actual white irises is very important because it was only the number one that would have had that. So is it real? Um, yeah, I mean, you definitely have a number one ponytail Barbie here, and it's pretty impressive. OK, that's cool. So what do you think it's worth? There's a lot of really nice elements here. But this stand actually looks to be reproduction, which does affect the value a little bit. But you have the box, all the original accessories. And this is actually signed by Ruth Handler. That's a really interesting thing, too. I've seen Ruth Handler's autograph. I can't authenticate the autograph for you, but I can tell you it looks very consistent. It's a very nice piece. I think that you have no problem whatsoever getting somewhere between, you know, $7,500 and $8,000 for this doll. Yeah, right on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rick. Just pieces of this people would add to their collection. It's amazing. It's definitely the staple for any Barbie collector. What's your best price for it? Well, 8000 Well, yeah, that doesn't make any sense for me, because I'm going to resell it. So I'll give you 4500 Um, no. Um, 7000 You take five grand? No. 6000 I'll meet you in the middle. I'll give you 5500 I mean, I'm not going to get rich off you, but I can make some more. Sweet! My daughters are going to be so jealous. The Barbie doll is pretty awesome, but right now I have to get out of here because if I'm not sitting in the audience, it'll be a very expensive tickets that Marie gave me. I imagine she's going to be pretty bad. <laughs> what is this? This is the very first piece of merchandising ever done for Superman. The very first, huh? As a matter of fact, it's the first superhero action figure of, of anybody. Superman? Yes, sir. Faster than a speeding bullet. Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Oh, man. <laughs>
I'm a pretty serious toy collector. If I can find somebody else that appreciates it, that's great. And if not, I still do appreciate it. I don't think I'll let him go for less than $5,000. This is really cool. So you're saying this is the first piece of merchandising for Superman? Correct. OK. This has got to be old. It's got the old Superman logo on his chest. It looks different now. How'd you get it? There's a, a gentleman that I met years ago. He started selling off some of his massive Superman collection. So I wound up buying it from him. OK. He was a smash hit from day one. Back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, almost always you'd go see a double feature at the movies. And in between the movies, you would have your animated shorts. So it would be like Woody Woodpecker or Superman. Right. And those were really important because it drew in kids. This is the original box? It is. I'll tell you something else about the box. There's only 10, maybe 12 examples of this box being original that even exist. OK. So the big question is, how much do you want for this action figure? $6,000. Whew. You better get some kryptonite. <laughs> it's very, very interesting. I, I just don't know nearly enough about this thing. So do you mind if I call up a friend? He's got a shop right down the street. I mean, that's all he deals in is vintage toys. He really knows what he's talking about. Let me call him up, get him down here. He'll take a look, and then maybe we'll figure something out. OK? Sounds good. I have no problem with a, a toy guy coming in. I'm assuming he knows his collectibles. Don't get your ass whooped. This doll is real. This is the oddly shaped Superman. <laughs> okay. yeah. He's got a weird pelvic region. That's awesome. I mean, they don't come up very often, to be honest with you. This is the first superhero action figure that was ever made. This came out in 39, just a year after Action Comics released their first Superman item. It looks really good. I mean, we got the box. Over the years of me doing toys, I mean, I've seen the Superman action figure from 1939 before, but only on one other occasion have I seen the box. I mean, this would have been a big hit in 39. I mean, it was about $1.65 back then, and so it was relatively affordable. Superman was a big name. They had the comic strip, and then not too long after this was made, then you had the radio show. I mean, we were going into World War II, and they even used uh, Superman for propaganda back then, too. That was really big. So now, I mean, is this considered in good shape, bad shape? In my opinion, it looks like the chest area and then the whole head, it looks like it has been repainted. There wouldn't be these oversprays. I mean, for the most part, it looks pretty original, but there is some evidence of restoration on this item. OK. So all that being said, what's it worth? These can get up there. I mean, all original, especially with the box. I mean, they fetch a big premium with collectors. I mean, you can see these get in the five, ten thousand dollar $10,000 range. This one here, after looking everything over with the box and the fact that it's been restored, I would say you could easily get retail maybe in the $3,000 range for this item. OK. The thing I'm going to argue with you on the price is the box. There's a lot of days I can get two or $3,000 out of the box. Yeah, if the box was maybe a few grades higher than this, I mean, you could see the box fetch easily 1500 But uh, being there's a few issues with the box, just on the insides, the tape, the box alone, you'll probably maybe pull uh, maybe 800 on the box. Okay. <laughs> Not mine, you won't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, All man. Right. Take care, guys. Uh, see you later. Have a good one. Appreciate it. The seller believes it to be worth more, but unfortunately, when it's restored, it makes it a lot harder to sell. Even if there are flaws with it, most collectors prefer it to be 100% original. I go two grand for it. I'll have to pass. If I can't get five grand, I'll just have to go home with him. This same doll with a rag box at a, a big Americana auction 10 years ago brought a little over $10,000. It was 10 years ago. That was a different world. What I can do is I can I go 2500 if you want it. But I, I think I'll keep it. OK. Well, have a good one, man. Uh, if you change your mind, come on back. Thanks. Truthfully, I turned down 3500 about a month ago. So if I'm going to turn down 3500 I'm probably not going to show up here today and sell it for 2500 A guy brought in a Toy Story Woody action figure that is supposedly signed by Tom Hanks. 
He's asking $2,000 for the doll, so I called in our toy expert, Steve, to see if this is a deal I should play around with. Thanks for rushing over here. So, I have a couple um, Tom Hanks autographed items here. One of them is a Woody doll, and it looks a little new to me, but I'm not sure, so I thought I'd call you down and maybe you could shed some light on it for me. Well, this franchise, absolute monster. So when Disney and Pixar got together on this, this was the first digital animated full-length film, and they just knocked it out the park. Storyline was amazing. It made you laugh. It made you cry. You cared. It had all of the emotions in it. This movie, most film buffs will say, is the perfect cartoon. But we're here to talk about the toy. So the toy is a newer toy, and what they did is you started with the pull string. The very first original Woody was the pull string. And then when Toy Story 4 came out, they changed the packaging up, and they created this battery-operated one. So this version was the one that replaced the pull string. But most of the collectors want the pull cord because that's how Woody was in the movie, and they want it to be kind of authentic. Now, from the standpoint of a collector, is this signature cool? Is this something that maybe they would want to add to their collection even though they already had this toy? Tom Hanks is a grail signature for a lot of collectors because you can't catch him, and then when you do, half the time, he won't sign. This was a common release. Generally, you find them in very good condition. I do notice that there is a tear down at the bottom of the box Me there. too. Um, the tear does affect the value. So this toy in its current condition, what kind of value do you put on it? So the toy itself, with the box conditions, I would expect it would sell for about $50. And then with the autograph on it, it does elevate it, although it detracts because it's personalized. I think in this condition, you're going to have no problem getting $400 for this. All right, well, since the volleyball isn't a toy, I guess I'll let you go. And uh, I'll let you know when I have something else. Thank you. All right, good luck. Thanks. Well, my autograph guy should be here in the next few minutes. If you could just stick around and make sure the autograph's legit, maybe we could work out a deal on everything. Yeah, no problem. I'll hang out. I hope when the second expert sees my item, it will be actually valued closer to what I believe it's valued at. This gentleman has a couple of Tom Hanks autographs, and they're pretty cool. One of them is on a Toy Story Woody doll. And we have the Wilson volleyball, which reminds us of the movie Cast Away. Nice. The thing about Tom Hanks I've seen through the years, I've met him, uh, he doesn't really sign much in person anymore. So I don't get to see his autograph that much. The great thing about these items is stuff that collectors actually really desire. You're looking at two iconic films that he was part of, and these aren't things that typically people are able to get signed. Let's say if he did sign on the streets, they'd be very yeah, difficult. Not many people have a Wilson ball in their pocket, right? I've seen very few of those. Yeah. So based on what you told me on the phone, I could you know, pretty much tell they're signed in uh, fiber tip markers. So I'd like to go directly to kind of the examples I have of his signature. Tom Hanks used to have this gorgeous signature years ago. Through the years, though, he's gotten more rushed, more hurried along. And this is more what you get from Tom Hanks. So his newer signatures, I call them more modern, more rushed. Even when it's nice, it's still kind of slobby. And that's kind of what I see here. I could almost tell Tom signed these back to back. I mean, it looks literally like the same signature again and again. But I have absolutely no problem with these signatures at all. They're really nice. And what value do you put on these? The doll's pretty cool. I think that's a neat thing to have, actually. Collectors do seek these things out pretty consistently to have a action figure signed by him compared to a photo, which is more common. I put the value of that right at the 350 range, um, because you do have the personalization. Personalization hurts it a little. The ball, though, I find more unique, and it's not exactly the handprint one we want with the, or the blood print, but it's a very unique item to have signed by. I'd put that value even higher. I'd say that's closer to $500. So we're thinking about $850 for the pair? Yeah, that's, that's a good ballpark range for that. OK, well, thanks for coming by, Steve. All Appreciate right. it. Good to see you. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you. OK, well, I've heard everything um, I needed to know from both of the Steves. We're looking maybe 500 for the pair. No, I couldn't do that. I think from what he said for the value on the Woody doll, I'd rather just hang on to it. Uh, it's worth more to me than that. Interested in getting rid of the Wilson ball, though. What would you give me for that? Would you do 250? Have to sweeten the pot a little bit, I think. I'll give you a kiss on the cheek. Kiss on the cheek and 300 bucks? <laughs> 
I could do 300 bucks on the Wilson volleyball just because I do think that I'll be able to sell it fairly easy. Um, I'm comfortable at the 300. That sounds good to me. I'll do it. Come over here, grab your ID, and we'll write up a deal. So I guess I'll just keep the Woody doll and cast away the volleyball. All right, what do you got here? It's an old toy from the 80s. His name is Uzit. OK. And he was a very unique item, actually. It's a toy that you would take off his head, fill it up with slime, squeeze his stomach, and ooze would come out of his eyes, ears, nose, mouth. My parents thought it was disgusting. Yeah, he does look like an alien has a drinking problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I found ooze it at a swap meet, and I think I ended up paying $7 for him. I collect a lot of rare toys, and I recognize it right away. I don't generally collect this type of figure, and it's just sitting in a display case, so I figure I'd sell him and get the items that I do collect. The Uzit is a pretty cool toy. It's pretty rare, too. It came out in uh, 1981. It was made and um, manufactured by a family from Louisiana, and they really weren't known for anything else. They didn't have another toy. Have you ever used it yourself? I've never used it. The slime is still intact. OK, I wonder if this is the original slime. Ooze, this is pretty cool. Red ooze compound may be squeezed out of the doll, but must be put back into the doll or bottle or it dries up. They didn't have to run out of goo, you know? Exactly. As long as they took care of it. Oh, yeah. I see you got the box here, too. That's good. It does have some damage, obviously. It's yeah. missing the top there. It's not often you have a box from a toy this rare. Exactly. Because this toy wasn't mass produced. And that's what makes it so valuable today. These things can be worth a couple thousand dollars if they're still in the package and in the box, you know? Yeah, the plugs are intact. Actually, I do see a little slime residue in there. So I imagine at some point this was definitely played with, so. Possibly. Um, what did you want to do with it? I was looking to sell it. OK. Um, how much are you looking to get? I was looking to get around 500 for it. You know what, that doesn't sound like a bad deal to me, but I just really don't know how much they're worth opened up with a box that's in OK condition, it's not in great condition, and a bottle of slime. Um, I'm going to call my buddy Johnny in, who owns the Toy Shack. If you have a little bit of time, you can hang out here. No, that's fine. Let me go call him. Cool. I'm actually really excited that they're bringing in an expert. It's pretty rare. If I could squeeze more out of it, I'm going to. Nice, man. It looks like it's in good condition, but it does look like it's been used. And he says this is an original bottle of Uzit, or he thinks it is. He bought it out of Swami, so he doesn't know for sure. So what do you know about the old Uzit? Oh, this is classic, man. You don't see these almost never. These are super rare. I don't think they did very well. I mean, look at the box. As a mom, and you see that, you're like, hell no, my kid's not getting this, you know? It's just a big old mess waiting to exactly. happen. You know, but for a boy, I mean, that's a cool toy. Yeah, all of that looks right. Surprises survived. Have you seen any of these still in the box before? Not at all. I've seen a few in past auctions, but I've never seen one up close and personal in the box. The condition of the figure itself looks great. It's awesome that we have the bottle. I mean, that's in perfect condition. The only condition issue is we have the top flap of the box that's almost entirely gone. You know, and that will hurt the value, but this is exactly like the collector grade that that somebody would love to have it in this condition and put it in their collection. All right, so how much do you think the total value of everything is? I've seen ones in re with really nice boxes sell in the thousand and twelve hundred dollar range. I would see this easily getting six fifty to seven fifty on this. All right, thank you. Cool, man. All Take right. care. Hey, thank good you. Good this goes to many different genres of collectibles. You got vinyl guys, you got people that are into the space and alien toys, and then you even got guys that collect the stretch stuff. This can go to just about any collector out there. So you heard what Johnny had to say. He said, I'm taking it you like that. Yes, I do very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, how much do you want for it? I think 500 is a reasonable asking price for the item. Um, not a reasonable price for me. I'm trying to make money on it, you know? Thinking more like 200 bucks. I can't do 200. Your toy expert said it himself, he's never seen one in person. Yeah. I think realistically, yeah, I'd be happy at 350, given the condition, the history behind it. If you could do 300, we can make a deal right now. I think 300's fair. All right, it's a deal, man. I'll meet you right over here to write it up. I'm leaving here with $300. I'm excited. I think I'm gonna take my family out for a great dinner. Just have a great time tonight.